Hi, my name is Udo Slender. Welcome to my YouTube channel about adventures in astrophysics. This video is about the simulation of collisions between two galaxies and the formation of large, elliptical galaxies following from this crash. In astrophysics, we cannot experiment. Everything is too far away, too big, too hot. Observation and theory, the two traditional branches of our science, have been complemented by computer experiments in the last decades. Here these barriers can be overcome. The results, how beautiful they may be, must of course be verified by observations. I will go into some details here that should inspire you. Try it. Take your computer, learn to program and experiment yourself. Okay, let's start. Almost a hundred years ago, Edwin Hubble developed a scheme in which many of the observed galaxies can be arranged. On the left of the diagram, the elliptical types are found according to the degree of increasing ellipticity, starting from the totally symmetrical spherical shape. Galaxies often come together in loose groups or large clusters. The large clusters can contain thousands of members, like the Coma Cluster, shown here, which is about 100 million light-years away. Such clusters are dominated by one or two giant elliptical galaxies, so-called CD galaxies. Since the galaxies in such an environment collide frequently, the question of the outcome of these crashes arises. Especially the CD galaxies are seen as end products of the merger with other large and small neighbors. So cannibalism is the order of the day here. But before we go into the calculation of these processes, I'll tell you something interesting about n-body simulations. The fact is, that here we can calculate much faster than nature does it in real time with these galaxy crashes. If, for example, the computer needed about 2 minutes for 180,000 stars to produce the video that follows, how long does it calculate on the real problem of 200 billion stars? You might guess it takes a Hubble time or more. It turns out that this computation takes roughly 20 years. Well, it will surprise one or the other, and I say that the fastest computer in the world cannot calculate a globular cluster of only a million stars in its dynamic development in detail. Not in a thousand years. In the case of the galaxies, the physical and astronomical conditions are significantly more relaxed compared to the globular clusters. For the dynamics of the galaxy system, it is completely irrelevant if a handful of stars come pretty close or even crash into each other. No matter, the galaxy is just too big. Numerically, the whole thing is called collisionless and body simulation. A softening parameter is used in the calculation of the forces, which also keeps everything in the green area in the computer. If it happens that two stars come too close to each other, the forces would rise quadratic to uncontrollable values. It's different in a globular cluster. Collisional n-body must calculate all abnormalities that occur to monitor the overall energy budget. So if you want to calculate 12 billion years of development and are forced to calculate, for example, the close encounter of two neutron stars in the millisecond range, you have to do it. You must reduce your time step for calculations from let's say thousand years to milliseconds to get it right. Neutron stars are among the most massive objects found in globular clusters and therefore they are important. If they form our new binary system in a close encounter, it converts orbital energy to rotational energy of that system, which, as it is even heavier, sinks deeper into the potential well which means it sinks closer to the center. 
an important change for the potential of the cluster. You must compute that in detail, otherwise you will quickly get a completely different result. The globular cluster is very sensitive. There are very, very ingenious calculation methods here too, but what has been said above still applies. The computing time increases proportionally with n times n. A software package that is able to handle these problems is nBody6. How does one proceed now? If one would like to model such a cosmic event in the computer, first of all, we need a model galaxy consisting of, let's say, 50,000 stars. Each of these stars gets a mass, a position in space, thus a location vector, and a velocity vector attached. If you do this somehow and then start calculating you will see that the whole thing collapses immediately or expands very fast, you can think a lot about this setup, but the business of making a nice galaxy has to be learned, I recommend NEMO instead. NEMO is a stellar dynamics toolbox that can be found on GitHub. Author is Peter Tubin. Okay, it takes a while before you feel comfortable with it. But at the end you will have learned a lot and you can produce nice and stable galaxies. For the integration of your n-body worlds, I recommend Bonsai. Bonsai is a gravitational n-body tree code that runs completely on the GPU. This reduces the amount of time spent on communication with the CPU. Authors are Yerun Bedorf, Evgeny I. Gaburov, Simon Portagy Swart. You can find it on GitHub as well. Okay, let's assume everything works, and a first nice and also stable galaxy appears on the screen. What happens next? We need a second, somewhat distant galaxy, which is then to merge with the first in the course of the crash. It can be of a completely different Hubble type, or, if you want to make it easy, you can just take the first one, copy the data, and only translate the new object in space. If you calculate the whole thing and visualize it, it looks quite artificial. It is better to rotate the second randomly. Such operations do not change anything in the potential field of the galaxy, as for example a scaling or shearing would do. Now let's see if the result of the merger between two large spirals will be an elliptical galaxy. The galaxies here first circle each other, shred each other and form long tails, as they are known from the antennae or tadpole galaxies. I link a nice, surprising result of an n-body simulation at the end of the video. This close-by event shows NGC 5128, famous to radio astronomers as Centaurus A. Here, the fusion is already well advanced. If we let the simulation run long enough, a nice large Hubble-type E0 galaxy emerges here. The stars, which moved in the two original galaxies on circle-like orbits around the respective center, move here disorderly in the potential of the galaxy. Physicists recognize here immediately an increase of the entropy of the system and are satisfied. For the stability of the model galaxies, an extended halo of dark matter particles is important. Here should be about 10 times more mass than in the stars themselves. The majority of giant galaxies contain a supermassive black hole in their centers, 
ranging in mass from millions to billions of times the mass of our Sun. The black hole mass is loosely tied to the host galaxy bulge or spheroid mass. As said before, results from simulation, how beautiful they may be, must of course be verified by observations. There are other ideas, according to which the large CD galaxies should have formed a long time ago mainly from the collision of large gas streams or by countless mergers of small galaxies. Perhaps the James Webb Telescope, which is to be launched in three days, will bring light into the darkness. Surprising results of an n-body simulation, here in my video about the future of the Cartwheel Galaxy.